Hello, my name is Bruce Beamish. I'm here at the Anyang Forging Press Factory. And today we're going to see Mr. Lee and Mr. Schwag assemble a 55kg L-series power hammer like the one standing beside me. It is from our range of smaller power hours that we make to suit the individual user in the small to medium workshop. It's very popular with blacksmiths, knife makers and wrought iron shops. Anyway, let's have a look at how it goes and I'll look at how it goes and I'll just... Anyway, let's watch the process and I'll go over through it as we go. This is the hammer assembly area and here we can see some of the tools used. Mr. Schwe and Mr. Lee are installing the crankshaft and bearing assembly. A few taps of the copper dolly to drive it home. The torque wrench is used for all bolts and nuts. Okay. Conrod assembly. You can see the bronze bushing fitted to the connecting rod. This provides good travel free performance. The gudgeon pin, or wrist pin as it is called in other places, must be nice neat fit in the bronze bushing. A small pin is fitted to the gudgeon pin and this aligns with a slot in the piston skirt to prevent the gudgeon pin from rotating in use. Finally, the fitting of a circlip locks the gudgeon pin in place. Now the connecting rod is lowered into the rear cylinder. Mr. Schwe points out that the piston ring gaps do not line up together and do not point in the direction of the internal air channel from the rear cylinder towards the valves. Also, it is important to note that the port on the side of the piston must align in the correct position. The piston and connecting rod assembly are driven home with a trusty copper dolly. Care is taken to compress the piston rings as the piston goes in. We can see the lower end of the connecting rod being fitted to the crankshaft. Okay. Special locking washers and nylock nuts are used to secure the connecting rod. Some oil is added before fitting the cylinder cover to ensure there is adequate lubrication for the beginning of the test run. Mr. Lee shows that the rear cylinder cover has to be placed the correct way so that the cutaway section of the cover aligns with the internal air channel. Again, the cylinder cover nuts, like all the others, are tied to the predetermined setting of the torque wrench.
The installation of the valves is next. Mr. Shway is checking if the air supplement valve is moving freely and tests it with some water to see that it is seeking correctly and airtight. Mr. Lee fits the valve assembly and again they're torqued up and the valves are checked by hand for smooth rotation. Installing the tuck is next up. This is a good shot down the bore of the cylinder. The top of the stuffing box can be seen. The two flat sections are the fixed wipers and they align with the flats on the ram and the curved sections are the flexible wipers and they seal against the round surfaces of the ram. We also have a view underneath to see a bit more of the stuffing box assembly. Piston and tuck are carefully lowered into place by Mr. Lee. He's taking due care to ensure that the flats on the ram align with the fixed wipers as I mentioned before. Grease stipples or grease circs are fitted and the cover plates are installed. As you can see, only a basic kit of tools is needed making these hammers very easy to work on indeed. Thanks, and that's the end of the video. See you next time.